everyone, I'm Matt from Midwest PPG. Thanks for joining me for another video this week. I thought I'd talk to you about glider ratings, maybe demystify the whole rating thing for you, and tell you where the, the, the glider ratings succeed, where they benefit us, and where they fail, and kind of leave a bit to be desired. Midwest PPG is a dealer for Mac Para and Ozone. And if I use them as a, an example, it's just because that's who I'm most familiar with. But uh, this is, I really intend for this to be unbiased. I don't want to sway you towards one winger or, or another. And along with that, my opinion of the wing market in general is very high. I believe if you buy a major brand wing, especially in the beginner and inter intermediate classes, you're not going to go wrong. Uh, I can't think of a property of a wing that either makes me say someone shouldn't buy a wing or they should buy a wing. They're all just a lot, they're just all very good. Um, and if you're in the market for a new wing in the beginner and intermediate class, rest assured, whatever you go with, you're gonna get a great product, you're gonna love it, it's gonna treat you right. Uh, hopefully that makes your buying process just a little bit easier. So let's talk about the wing ratings. If you open your manual and look at the specifications, you're gonna see two different ratings on your wing. There's probably an EN rating and maybe there's PG beside it and then there'll be another rating called DGAC and it might have PPG beside it. There's two different types of ratings. The first type is a rating that is given by a third party and the second type is a, a rating that is it's like a self-declaration by the company and the EN rating system is the former. It's a, it's a third party that evaluates a wing, uh, runs it through their battery of tests, and then sends a report back about that wing. The DGAC rating is the second uh, type of rating. It's a rating where the company f um, lists all of the attributes of their glider and files that document with the French government. And they, they serve different purposes. The DGAC rating serves as a legal fallback if something were to happen, at least in France. It serves as kind of a manufacturer's assurance. The EN rating, on the other hand, the manufacturer doesn't have any say in. Another important distinction is with the EN rating, third party pilots test the wing and they put it through a battery of uh, performance tests, malfunctions, and give it a rating. The DAGC rating is not that way. While uh, company team pilots may fly it and, and put things in the document that they submit on the wing, the DGAC rating, there is no third party validation of the company's claims. The EN rating is a European standard that's, or a set of standards that a company can be qualified to test products against. And so the, the links I have in the description are a company called Air Turquoise, who they, they have been granted the right to bless wings in the EN rating system. So the tests consist of different kinds of stress tests and load tests, and there's a series of flight tests as well. And the way the flight test works, two different pilots get a version of the wing that's being tested and when you look at your manual in the specifications, when you see the weight range for the rating, that weight range is established by the weight of the light pilot and the weight of the heavy pilots that conducted the test. EN consists of four different categories, the A category for beginners, B for intermediate, C for advanced, and D for expert. A simplified way of thinking about the rating system is this. The rating system measures how much does the wing require of the pilot? And in a malfunction, how much heading change occurs and how much altitude is lost? Or how long does it take for the wing to reopen? If we go back to the A, B, C, and D rating with that simplified idea, the A rated wings ask nothing of the pilot. They actually correct a lot of your mistakes. In a malfunction, they lose very little altitude, they open very quickly, and they, uh, the heading change is very small, less than 90 degrees. When you notch up to the next grade of wing, the next class, the B wings, 
they still don't require any pilot input in malfunction and in other tasks like launching and landing they're a little self-correcting but in malfunctions the bee gliders are going to be a little more dynamic they'll maybe go through a little further turn the heading change will be greater and maybe a, a little bit longer in opening the c class is where the wing may start to require a little bit of pilot input or the nature of malfunction may be more dynamic or take longer to recover than the test pilots feel is appropriate for a beginner pilot. And then the D-class is just a further extension of that. Something is going to be required of the pilot in malfunction. Uh, it isn't very self-correcting and it really demands an expert pilot. When the wing goes for rating, two test pilots fly the wing and each pilot scores the wing a, B, C, or D across the battery of 23 tests. The final rating that the wing gets is the lowest score that either pilot gave any of the single tests. So it's possible to have a wing where both pilots scored every criteria as an A, but one pilot found one certain test to be more like a C. Well, that glider will be totally uh, rated as a C glider. That's a good thing. It means that Oftentimes, the glider is going to be safer than just looking at it and saying that's a C glider. It doesn't mean that all of the categories are C. It just means that at least one category, the glider was given a C rating by one of the two pilots. If you're new to glider design, let me introduce you to a property called aspect ratio. Aspect ratio is simply the, the ratio between the wing span and the wing cord. Almost everybody's heard of wingspan, but quite a few people have never heard of the cord measurement of a wing, and that's the distance from front to back. We can drive the aspect ratio of the wing by dividing the wing span by the wing cord. Aspect ratio is one of the major measurements that change as you march from the A class to the D class through a manufacturer's stable of gliders. Here's what you need to know about aspect ratio. A low aspect ratio is appropriate for beginner pilots and there's safety and stability in a wing profile that has a lower aspect ratio. As aspect ratio gets higher and higher, we make a trade-off between stability for efficiency and performance. And in the very, very high-end gliders, uh, pilots are willing to give away a lot of safety and stability for the efficiency that the gliders have. Here's a funny example. This is called the Death Blade. It's an experimental wing designed by a test pilot in Europe. Just for reference, a paramotoring beginner class wing usually has an aspect ratio between four and a four and a half. And that means four and a half meters of wingspan for every one meter of mean cord. A high-end paragliding competition glider may get up in the seven to seven and a half ballpark. And this thing's a 13 to one aspect ratio. It's kind of impractical, but you can really see how we've exchanged stability for efficiency. The longer that wing gets, the more efficient it is. So where does the rating system fail and where does it succeed? First off, where the rating system fails is the, the EN system is really designed for paragliders. These wings aren't tested with motor weight and adding 50 or 60 pounds of weight to your in-flight profile, it, depending on the wing, it can really change the behavior of the wing and malfunction. Anytime you load the wing heavier and heavier, the recovery from malfunction is going to become more and more dynamic. There are a lot of PPG pilots flying their wings outside of the EN rating weight range, and technically that invalidates the rating. It doesn't say that the wing's going to be suddenly dangerous. It just means nobody's tested it at the weight that you're trying to fly it if you're outside of the weight range. So how the wing behaves, especially in malfunction, is a question mark. It would be nice if we had a rating system that specifically addressed how wings behave with the extra weight of motors. That's not to say that the rating's bad. I think the EN rating really succeeds in giving newer pilots a, a really solid expectation of how their wing is going to behave. I think there'd be a lot more accidents in our sport if we didn't have some underlying criteria to judge wings. Another area where the EN rating system kind of fails with PPG is because of a divergence in flight philosophy between paragliding and powered paragliding in the expert and advanced class gliders. Paragliding gliders are designed for efficiency, to make best use of the thermal currents 
and to lose as little altitude when traveling between two thermals. As you start to get into expert and advanced class paramotor gliders, we don't really have the same style of gliders that the paragliders do. Our gliders tend to get much, much smaller, and our goal is speed and agility rather than glider efficiency. Thus, the E and rating system doesn't really have anything for the advanced and expert class gliders that PPG pilots are flying. There are a couple other rating systems that are validation rating systems. DHV and AFNOR come to mind, but you don't commonly see those in the United States, at least as commonly as the EN system. To summarize, the EN rating system is a third-party validation where test pilots give their opinion back to the manufacturer and the manufacturer passes that on to you. The DGAC rating is a declaration by the company that is filed with the French government about the properties of their wing, but it isn't validated by a third party. I hear a couple misconceptions sometimes. There's no such thing as a glider that's absolutely safe. In fact, in the beginner and intermediate class gliders, they're all just about the same. If somebody's telling you that their wing is the safest option and everything else is just asking for trouble, it's a sales pitch. The other thing that I hear quite often is such and such a wing is uncollapsible or loading the wing really, really heavily makes the wing uncollapsible. That's not true at all. The problem with that is if you believe that the wing is uncollapsible, you might put yourself into situations where you're really in trouble if it does collapse. And the more heavily you load the wing, the more dynamic the malfunction and recovery will be. I hope this shines a little bit of light on the rating systems for you. As usual, if you have any questions, shoot them out to me. I am more likely to respond to an email than I am the comments. I'll check these comments once or twice, but um, after this goes out, I kind of go back to the rest of my week and forget about it. So if you have a really important question, shoot me an email and I'm glad to help you out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next week.